the screen. Share. Whoa. Whoa. I was a bit slow on the uptake there today. Huh. You do. Amateur. Tell you it's amateur. Oh, yeah. Spotlight. Hi, everyone. My name is Bruce. This is the NetTalk webinar, well, the NetTalk user group webinar for Thursday, the 19th of May 2022. And for some reason, we're just not as not as slick as we usually are. Or, and I speak for myself there. Um, with me today, as slick as ever, is Ted. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Can't hear Ted. <laughs> And he, Ted's muted. <laughs> That's no, what it looks like anyway. Ted asked to unmute Ted. Very slick and slippery this morning. <laughs> Obviously, we, <laughs> we, we've, all, we've all got to that time of the month. I don't know. Uh, and the other voice you hear uh, who can only hear us in a choppy little headset is John. Hey, John, how's it going? It's, it's going as well as it could be, apparently. We're, we're, we're going to get through this, Bruce. We're going to get through it together somehow. <laughs> So, but I thought I'd post a picture of some sunshine, John, to make you look forward to summer that's coming. And oh, okay. uh, you can you can see what's you can see what's around the horizon when the snow is all melted, and the polar bears are pushed off to Queensland. There you go. There you go. Right, we are doing questions and answers today, so do go ahead and get your questions up in the questions box. I'll answer as many as I can, and when they're all gone, then we'll wrap it up. First up today springing into action as it were is mike hey mike how's it going hey bruce uh good except for i don't like your picture you get up because here in texas it's already 100 degrees oh my word <laughs> and it's only seven o'clock in the morning that's that's good <laughs> hey uh so here's here's a weird thing that's uh happened uh i have a, a browse that's in a form form has some buttons on it some you know some radio buttons to feed a uh, filter for the browse all of that works great uh, but when you click the next button on this browse everything looks okay except uh, you can't click on any uh, any row you know the, the, the little highlight for the road that you click on nothing nothing it's like it's dead now you can go forward and you go backwards but <clears throat> after you leave the first row after you leave the first screen it it's blank the, the only you, clue go ahead do you see do you see anything in your browser console uh in terms of in terms of uh the uh the sort order in the in the uh, filter no 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 so oh. no in the browser console not debug view um oh. are there any errors there if you go open your dev tools and you look in the console um no there's not no i see what you're saying no uh everything looks normal other than that uh and and unfortunately i don't have my development system online at the moment so i can't even go look at it uh, in any detail so i'm just kind of right now i'm just kind of saying that any anything come to mind other than what you just said anything come to mind um so the first thing i would do if i was debugging this is um are there any pop-ups in the system no no so we don't pages. use Good. We, we, yeah okay so the next thing i would do is call the browse as browse so not not a browse on a form, as it were. Uh -huh. Just call the browse as a browse, and see if you can move forward and backwards, next and previous, and so on. Yeah. And and keep an eye on on Dev Tools and keep an eye on the console there, because if you see any kind of error, that's almost certainly what's triggering it, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that error. Gotcha. So we're trying to get it so it'll give us that error, whatever it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and I'm thinking you're getting one because what you're describing sounds like the JavaScript is stopped. And that's what happened when JavaScript stop. When it hits an error, it stops. It just stops dead. Um, and so the trick is going to be finding that error. Once you find that error, then things yeah. get reasonably straightforward. Now, yeah. when yeah. You, obviously, you, you're seeing the data refresh in the browse. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, whatever the error is, that's that's what we're chasing. Okay. So you try cool. and, you try and get it back to just the browse on its own page and those kind of things. Awesome. Thank you, if Bruce. You I appreciate the appreciate the idea, man. Yeah. Thanks. If you don't if you don't have any joy, give me a shot. And we can yeah. Yeah. I will. Look. 
Thanks. Cool. Pleasure, Mike. All right. Ben says, uh, yeah, make sure if you've got, okay, so let me let me just show you what, what he's meaning by this. Do, 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 do. If I go there and I go to McLaren, get rid of this. So one of the things along the way, and I've changed this now for moving forward. Um, but if you have any text fields on your forms, then text fields can default to HTML or they can default to plain. It's kind of up to you. And because applications got upgraded through the, the network versions, whatever the default was when that setting gets added, it's, it sticks. And for a while, the default was one of the HTML ed editors like Redactor or CK editor or whatever, or tiny MCE. Yeah. So if we go to defaults and we go to form and the HTML editor, you can see in this one as well, it's set to Redactor. The problem with that is that it was setting this setting, but not setting these settings. So mm -hmm. in this case, I've got Redactor turned on, which obviously you have to because it's, it's any text field is going to is going to use that. I've now changed it so defaults to none, um, because most people have got all of these turned off, and, and you know most people aren't using any kind of HTML editor, so it makes sense to just leave it as none. So that's something just to consider. Um, obviously, you can set the HTML editor on the field itself, but the field itself defaults to whatever the global setting is. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. It defaults to default, as it were. So that's something to keep an eye on. Typically, you'll see that though in the console uh, when you first load your front page, um, you'll start to see errors and things like that. But uh, you see, can it bend? It, it becomes more an issue on pop-ups than pages, but you should see the pages, you should see the errors. Pop-ups don't always show the errors in the console. But the pages usually do. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks. Right, Dennis says, how to set up themes. Oh, I love it. Hey, Dennis, uh, you can talk to us. Let me unmute you. Dennis, you there? You're still muted in Zoom. It used to be that we could unmute someone, but um, they changed. They changed that. <laughs> I suspect because <laughs> if you could just randomly unmute people. There we go, Dennis. How's it going? Talk to us. We can't hear you. Nothing coming through. Dennis, I'm going to leave your mic open. You you play around a little bit there. Um, you can try unplugging your headset, plugging back in again. Make sure Zoom is set to use your headset for the audio stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave you unmuted. I'm going to bring Chris in. We're going to talk to him quickly, and then uh, we'll come back to you. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Hey, Bruce, pretty good. Actually, I got, uh, well, I guess I'll let everybody know what my problem was. Uh, I have a, I had a web hook that uh, was written with NetTalk and it was not was failing on the auto uh, renew of the certificate. And Bruce was has been working with me, uh, helping me out during the week. And actually, I got it. I got it working. And the reason it wasn't working, Bruce, was because the PIM files didn't get cop copied over. There's two PIM files that you mentioned in the uh, instructions. Okay. Uh, they that, were yes. in my they were in my directory for creating the install. They just weren't being included in the install. So, ah, uh, okay. And you copied so that, them over, and, and it worked. worked. But I had to change uh, the the uh, webhook was listening on eighty eighty and five thousand eighty eighty insecure five thousand secure ports, 
and it would not renew uh, with the 8080 insecure port. I had to bring down the other web server, which listens on 80, and change change the uh, webhook to 80 before the certificates would actually renew. Yes, well, uh, and that's uh, that's fair. The 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 um, when it tests to see if you've done the work that you're going to so so the way the certificate system works is that you have to prove to let's encrypt that you are in control of the domain and you right. prove that by putting a file into your web folder somewhere specific right. file specific place and then you say to let's encrypt cool i've done that and let's encrypt says cool i'll, I'll go fetch it and they will only fetch on port 80 you can't use another port however they don't know if they're talking to your program or not. At all. All they're talking to. Oh, yes, Dennis, we heard you there. Good. All right. Yeah, hang around, hang around, Dennis. We'll come back. Um, so they don't know whether they're talking to your EXE or not. All they know is they're talking to port 80. So if right. you have another web server listening on port 80, what, what do you have listening on port 80? Do you know? It's a, at any screen uh, server. Ah. Um, they're listening on port 80. Why are they listening on port 80? Uh, well, the, yeah, that's a good question. Because I had because there's an insecure port to put a number in, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, we're actually using 8443 is the actual port that's being used, but it is listening. Okay. Okay. Well, then, yeah, just, just turn off port 80 then. I was going to say, I don't know if any screen can serve a file. That's the only thing. But if it can, then you can put that file into the any screen folder and it'll serve the file. Um, like that's what we do with Apache or IIS or whatever, if they're listening on port 80. You just well, put the file in their web folder and yeah. it'll get served. Yeah. Um, any screen, I don't know, but you wouldn't be running your any screen across port 80 anyway, you wouldn't want to do that. No. Uh, but the interesting thing though, was that I original, I think I originally used CertBot to get the certificate for the webhook and also use CertBot to get the certificate for um, the any screen. And then I did some kind of magic that I failed to make notes on, on how to get it in the form that NetTalk would, was using. Yes. So, but what I noticed when I was uh, trying to get CertBot to certify the, the webhook certificate, it, it had done it. It had done it automatically, but it was in a form that I couldn't use. Sure. And it did it, for, I, it did it for both sites. It did it, I mean, for both uh, servers. It did it for the any screen yeah. automatically. And yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm not the cert bot expert, but it's also got a list on port 80. So the any screen must have been stopped at, the, the, at that point because um, cert bot has to listen on port 80. It's, well, I say that it, it, for for an HTTP challenge, it does. Um, it's it's there may be other challenges. They may be doing it through a different challenge that I don't know. But if they're using an HTTP challenge, then they definitely have to listen on port eighty. That's that's the rules. That's that's let's encrypt rule. It's actually the 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 ACME standard, which is the this whole thing is a is a standard. We use let's encrypt, but they just. Uh, a service provider on top of the standard. Right, right. And the standard says that you have to use port 80, you can't use something else. So now the, the only problem I have now is that I've got an auto uh, renewal cert bot going for uh, the AnyScreen server and I've got yours going for the NetTalk server and they're not happy with each other. <laughs> no, they won't be because of the port 80 because if, if you're Network apps listening on port 80, then um, CertBot can't, and vice versa. Um, CertBot, doesn't CertBot work when the other servers are? If the any screen server is up and it's listening at 80, and the CertBot does the auto renewal, it works. It seems to anyway. I mean, I didn't bring yeah. down the, I didn't bring down the any screen I'm, server to do the CertBot. Like I say, I'm not the CertBot expert, so I don't know what challenge they're using or what what challenge you're using for that. Um, but I would say no, that's not probable. Okay. Um, I I will think about if we can. 
Because CertBot is it just fires up, does its thing, goes away, right? It doesn't hang right. around. Yeah, it just it does a schedules mm. a task, I think, to run about. Oh, um, well, there's two things you could do. You could add the any screen domain. Is it the same domain, different domain? It's different domain. A subdomain. Yeah. The same domain, but a, a different, different subdomain. subdomain. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you could add that to your to your network program, and it would get the certificate for that as well. Oh, OK. And you can put those certificates anywhere you like. I mean, right. you can manually, automatically. So yeah, it, I don't know what the certificate format is that any screen wants. What, what do they take a PEM so file cert, or what? Cert.pem. So, yeah. um, but converting to PEM is, is can be, I mean, it's automatable. It's, it's the open SSL EXE will do that for you. So, right. yeah, but it's just so those, you know, that's where I was getting confused. There's just so many different file and file formats and stuff. And I was <laughs> cunningly this because this is the internet you see. So, so never have, you know, three file formats when six will do. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> but the, the open SSL.exe that's in your application folder, yeah. that will convert them. You mm -hmm. just got to find the, the magic line to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's what I was working with before. And, and yeah, Google Google's very good at that. You just say open SSL space convert this, you know, whatever uh, CRT to PEM or right. CRT key to PEM, or, and you'll get lots and lots of examples. It's 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 very straightforward. Right. Okay. All righty. Cool. Well, I appreciate your quick help though. That uh, that <laughs> it was it was more more me. Uh, in panic mode than my user. He, was, he said, ah, it doesn't matter. We're not using it that much anyway. You know. Wolfgang saying, would, would using two different IP addresses on the same machine be of any help to Chris? I mean, it, it could be. If you had two different IP addresses and you've got two different subdomains, you can point them at different IP addresses. And then um, the, it's only listening on one of them. Right. You, bind, you bind it so it's only listening on one of them. That can work. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Well, I, think I got too. enough to figure out how to do it. And if the worst comes to worst, I can just do it manually every 90 days. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not a good outcome there. We should uh, be we should be moving towards auto magic. Yeah. Auto magic. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate all your all your help, Bruce. Thanks. Pleasure, Chris. Mm -hmm. Cool. Bye. Dennis, talk to me. Hello. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Magic. How about that? Yeah. Works better if I turn the switch on on the mic. Yeah, there's that that can happen. That can happen. It's overrated, I think, but sometimes helps. Right. What can I help you with? Okay. Um, well, we were using NetTalk 8, uh, and I had this app, uh, and I switched over to NetTalk 12, upgraded. Mm -hmm. And my screens now look very different. So I have two. Uh, tables that are we're side by side and now they're one below another okay yeah. and uh i need them side by side <laughs> yeah <room. laughs> shall we should we look at um look at your screen um okay. i'm going to make you a panelist and then we can see a screen okay okay you can join there uh, I'm going to stop sharing. So now you're a panelist. You can um, you can move across the Zoom window. You'll see a green button at the bottom that says share screen. And you click on that. And then you'll see another button that says share. And you click on that. There we go. Two clicks for the price of one. OK, this is a good place to start in the web server. Stay here. Go to extensions, go to the top one, go to properties for that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, go to settings. Okay, so this is where a lot of the magic kind of starts. This is all the global settings. Um, and we're going to play around with some things while we're here, but let's go first to defaults. Uh, okay. And then, oh, there's the theme. How about there's that? There's the theme. Yeah. Okay. So you're using Metro Orange. All right. So a blue and orangey kind of theme thing yeah. going on. 
Okay. Um, I mean, if you're happy with that theme, we're happy with that theme. You, you, are you married to that theme? Or are you? No, absolutely not. The way that came about is we took one of your examples and uh, then modified it to do what we wanted to do. <laughs> okay. Let's change that to base. And only because base is a nice, uh, you can just type it in there, I think, in quotes. It's beeping at me. Yes. yes. Just click, just click on the entry field and change it to base. You can use your keyboard. Okay, there we go. With quotes? Yes, with quotes. Like that? Yep, that's a base. Okay, now before we, uh, before we leave, we can go back to properties. While we're here, we're gonna look at some other things. Let's go to settings, go to defaults. and go to browse. Okay, so you've got table layout. Um, let's change the children layout to grid. The bottom one there. Grid? Grid, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna suggest in the not too distant future, well, we might even do it now. You could change the, that, that layout method to grid as well. The one above it. it says table. So, so generally speaking, um, and if you go to the form tab, we'll see another one we can change to grid. So generally speaking, uh, we can change that to grid. And are you using any HTML editors? A uh, little bit, yes. Uh, which one do you use? Beats me. <laughs> okay, go to the scripts tab for me. Uh, it doesn't say you use any of them at the moment. Um, okay. I do so have HTML and uh, instructions on how to use the system. Yeah, no, but I mean, do you let people type HTML, you know, where they've no. got the WYSIWYG editor and stuff? No, no, I do not. Okay, go back to defaults for me. And, and there where it says redactor, just change that to none. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's leave it there for the moment. Let's compile and run this. So while it's compiling, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. Okay. The way things lay out, a uh, compiler's up toolbar above that. Oh yeah, that was uh, got the uh, zoom bar up there. Yes, <laughs> hiding behind it. Um, so the way things used to be laid out was with tables, HTML tables, the browsers and the forms. And that's, it's, it's okay, but it has some problems when you start talking about different screen sizes. And so Ooh, then we okay, moved to- Okay, I've got an error here. Oh, looks like I got an extra zero in there. How'd that uh, Wait, where are we? We, we? Hang on, stop, 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 stop. It's, it's just, just, just go to that error for me. Okay, stop there, stop there. Yeah, that's zero. Yeah, that looks like, that looks like embed code there. Yes. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you here because right. So I'm gonna say request remote control. All right. And then you allow me. All right, I can control. So let's see if I've got control here. I do. Okay. So let's close that for starters. Tools. Application options. IDE. We tick that one off. Edit embedded source and okay. Because we don't want to edit, we don't want to edit it in generated code, which is that no. 35. You, you want to edit it in the place where the editor is in context. Okay, so we say okay that. Close that. If I move that out the way, go back to here.
So now when you edit the error, it'll take you to your line of code. Oh, great. So you can edit us because you see now we're not in, we're in the app, yeah. we're not in. So you've got an extra line in there or something. You can go I ahead. I got a the zero it. is somehow I got a zero in there. Yes. Okay, let's try that. Okay. Uh, no, uh, yeah, the program's running. You need to stop the program. So this this is a setting as well. Okay. So we fix this for you while I'm here. Let me fix this. Hang on. Uh, let me see which which build of. Okay, I'm going to drive a second here. Let me drive. Okay. So it can automatically shut it down. Yeah. Holy cow! You're saving it's amazing. me a whole bunch. Amazing what the options will do if you. Here we look, uh, Clarion. Remind me, John, where am I? Where am I? I was trying to remember where it is. It's down here, I think, and it's cutting me off the bottom. No, not that one. Let me start looking for you, too. Come, come, put it bigger. There we go. Uh, da, 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 tools coding maybe coding or ID. I, I thought it was the manifest that controlled it. No, it's a it's a setting here. General. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I I can stop oh, no, the program. No, 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 you, no, no. Oh, we'll, we'll find we'll, it. We'll find it. Uh, it's so important. It's such a, and this is enterprise edition, so you should have it. Yeah. Emption. Ah, John's. Uh, IDE. Yeah, I found it. IDE projects and solutions toward the bottom. Kill running process before build. There it is. Get me off, yeah. Turn it on. Yeah. Okay. That? Now when we compile it, now, interesting you use use the button here, huh? Hey? Yeah. Start without debugger, build solution. Okay. I use the well, I use that one, yeah. That that usually gives me an error for some reason. Maybe you can help me with that one. <laughs> yeah, click it. Oh, oh, I was tempted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That how do I take get rid of that? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that as well. Okay, so before we even get started, we're just gonna fix a few things here. Okay. Close, close. Let me drive. Let me drive. There we go. Okay. Oops, I'm clicking the wrong machine. That's the problem. All right. So time has moved on since Network HTC. So we're gonna we can take advantage of that, and we're gonna take advantage of it with a new tab here. Add a tab, and I'm gonna call this settings, and I'm gonna drop a control template on it. Um, and dropping control templates onto Windows can be a little funky, depending on how complex the control template is. And this one's very complex. So oh. this this guy here. So now one has to click very carefully. I'm going to do oh. the clicking. I'll okay. tell you where I'm, I'm going to click the first one here. And then some stuff happens. And you, you, you don't do extra clicks. This is very important. I'm going to come down about a centimeter, half an inch or so, click again. And then for reasons best known to itself, I come down about another half inch and I click again. Oh my God. And now the whole control template is, is there. It looks a bit weird. Don't, don't click anything. You click out here. It's okay. as simple as that. If you do absolutely any other way, oh, wow. you will GPF that designer nicely and you get to 
it's just teaching you to do it right. Okay. So now what it's done is it's added a little sheet here. So let's just tidy up a little bit. I can do that. Do do do. Right. So so all right. So all of this. Can come down. Oops. I just want to get the. There we go. No, no, no. Oh, why is it wanting to move? No. It's a little bit weird. Doing it remotely is also a bit fun because everything's slightly delayed. Okay, I see what happened there. All right. And then the security what? one should look a little cleaner. We can tidy that up a little bit as well. Why is everything underlined? I'm guessing that's a setting. Why is why is everything underlined? I mean, the, the underlined check mark is on, but it's on for like every single control. Yeah, it's it's going to be on here. Window setting. No, it's a window. Yeah, it's a window font setting. Did you want it to be underlined? No, yes. the window itself. No. Yeah. Okay. No, I just took uh, the, the demo program, and that's what it gave me. So. Uh, no, okay, uh, that's someone, weird. <laughs> someone take that on. I all right. That on. That's why everything was underlined. Okay. So I'm the, the nice thing about this now is all the settings are there on the screen, and so they all happen at runtime. Um, wow. which is really cool because it means you can change stuff around while things are running. Huh. So I'm just going to put the settings in here. Uh, the generator sometimes does this when you first time generate. But oh, uh, so something's popped up. You can need to move it onto the screen for me. Can you see? There we go. There we go. Local data. And the settings. Timeout, wait, session timeout. There we go. I'm going to let, I'm going to do a generate just to see if it'll generate the others in for us. Uh, one of those. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. This time it didn't. Right. Set secure port. Set in secure port. So you see it filled in set web folder. And then like I say. Um, and that'll be set domains. It in sure. all of these. Yeah, I'm not sure I have Sequin loaded on this app. I uh, do doesn't, have it. Doesn't, Sequin's not a thing. Oh, okay. What made you What made you think of Sequin? I, I thought that I, you were talking about a Sequin folder. No. Okay. So no, no. Okay. All right. No, I'm intrigued enough to want to press this button. Okay. <laughs> do it. Be be bold, Bruce. Be bold. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it okay. Great. Okay. So now uh, what we're doing is we're listening on port 88 like we were before. Yeah. Um, but it, it it gets real easy to do secure sites and things like that because you can get certificates from here and whatnot. Um, that's another story for another day. We're looking at the theme right now. Okay. So let's bring up the browser. Okay. Well, I've. All right. This we're gonna. You're gonna see another issue that I have, and I I don't know if you want me to just bypass that for now. Well, but, let's uh, see what it is, and let's let's. Well, let's uh, you uh, give me instructions on how to set up uh, uh, sockets. Yes. And I've so I've loaded uh, uh, net refresh extension. Right. Number two. 
Oops, I think you said on your mute button. We can't hear you, Dennis, you've gone quiet. Still nothing. Uh oh. I think he's still there. I um, still see a mouse moving. But I can't yeah. hear Dennis anymore. Yeah, huh. It doesn't show that he's muted. <laughs> he's happily talking away. He can't hear us, obviously. Boy, everything's gone. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's just deal with that. Can you hear me, Dennis? I can't hear you. But I can make that error go away. Still can't hear you, Dennis. Wait, was was that you? Something okay, right? my headset turned off for some reason. There we go, we're back. Okay, that should fix it. So bring the browser back. Okay. Okay, do your login thing. Yep. So we were talking. We were talking about layout. So if I OK that, it goes ahead. Yeah, yeah. Click OK. Oh. OK. That's okay. So, that's much click. bigger. <laughs> so so just stop a second. Just stop a second. And let's yep. get rid of that uh, that other error first. It obviously didn't uh, didn't take whatever it had to do. It didn't do it. Uh, global, global properties, let's force a rebuild. So this is just a trick where I do to Enable force fuzzy. it to regenerate everything. Okay, cool. Back in the browser and do that um, login thing again. There was. Yeah. Yeah, kill that. Login. Yeah. I used to. There it is again. So, um, just a second. Let me... Now that came after I loaded the, that uh, other option. Oh, hang on. Um... And I thought it might have to do with not completing the process. That should suppress error messages. We don't need that. Um, this is the web server procedure that must be ticked on. Oh, well, we'll give it one more try, and if not, then we'll just turn that off for the moment. Let's 
try that login again. Where did it go? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so was that web server thing wasn't on? I need to be on. Okay, stop for a moment. Stop for oh, a yeah. moment because th this is now looking a bit different, right? Oh, it's dramatically different, yes. In a good or bad way? Well, it's bigger, uh, spread out much more. Uh, it's okay for this particular uh, screen, but uh, it's the this screen here. Oh, okay. I let, let me. <laughs> Uh, create a new game here. Oh, everything's in different spots. Yes. Okay. So, so I can see what's happening here. Just, just to stop a second. Okay. Just let me, just let me have a look, see what you've got. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you've done quite a lot of form layout where you put fields next to each other and you've probably set quite a lot of things. All right. So what you're probably going to end up doing, what's happening here, so, so make it bigger, it starts to wrap this round. Yeah. Like well, I, I can probably, oh, what did you do? I'm just using control mouse wheel to make it bigger and smaller. Oh, okay. But but um, let's go look at this form quickly, this create a new game form in the cloud. Okay. I just want to see what you've done to set that up. Okay, let me have a look at your I'll fields. let you drive. Yeah, Most of this cool. stuff, I just took whatever default it came up with. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is that as you upgrade applications, sometimes defaults, I don't, you know, defaults only happen when you first add it. So uh, yeah, sometimes it's a little different, but I'm just having a look, see what, what you're going on here. So um, uh, let's have a look, see if we can, yeah, there's a game name. And then game title you put it over onto the yeah. to the right. Okay, so game name. Do I want to take that off yet? Wait, where's game title? Right there. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, why'd you do that? Go away. Let's tick last online. That's what I would expect. What was the first one then? How can that be on and that still be highlighted? I know. So did you see that? They were both. Yeah, yeah. They were both enabled. But if this top one is ticked, obviously not the span. If yeah. this top one is ticked, then it, that one must be yeah. disabled. So that's a that's that's weird. <laughs> that's a that's an IDE thing, but okay. What else did we have? Do you normally have them side by side, or did you have them all? They were side of... by side, yes. Okay. But uh, why is why is game title way over there? Well, we can have a look at that because in the developer tools, come on.
Uh, press F12 for me. It doesn't take my F12. I pressed it. Did you see a developer tools window open somewhere? No. Okay. Yes. Do you want it? Yeah, yeah. Bring it back to the middle. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to dock it. No, no. I'm going to dock it. Do, 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 do. One of these lets me dock it there. That'll be fine. I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> so you see the purple lines? Yes. They, they are the grid. And um, I'm just looking now to see what's what on the grid. Um, we can actually get rid of this thing. We don't need that. So this, this is the developer tools. So this is the inspector. This is very important. When it comes to doing styling and things like that, you're going to do it in this thing. So, uh, which you get to with that F12. Um, I'm just having a look, see what the layout was like there. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to Claren for the moment. And I'm going to set the description. You wanted this one across to the right. So it's yeah. in row number one, column number two. Right. So start row is one. It's in that row. Start column is two. And span columns is obviously one. So it gives you more control about oh. where these things go. And Holy. okay. Yeah. They can they can fill up multiple cells, let's call them cells, vertically or yeah. horizontally. Um, and cunningly, they don't even have to be in order. You can if you rearrange these things, it'll remember where that was. So let's just oh, compile okay. that and run that and see what happens. So I was saying we move from tables to grids and in the grand scheme of things, it's a much better approach um, for reasons, many reasons, which I won't dive into all at the moment. It does look a bit different to start with. So it can take a bit of fiddling to get it back the way you want it. Um, but once you've got it there, then it works nicely. Uh, it's worth the effort. Um, create a game. Yeah, okay, that's better. <laughs> yeah, so so it, it can it can help the the system to to see what you've got here. For example, is you've actually got three color uh, three columns. Can you see you've got min players, max players, and auto restart all together? So you've got this big block in the middle. Yeah. Just because there's of this max players, so you might want to play around with that or move the auto restart up one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I can play with that now. So. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and space-wise, there's, there's, there's a few things you can do. So this is a theme, all right? This is okay. the base theme. There's quite a few themes and you can play around figuring out which ones you want, but you can change theme values. All right, somehow I've lost my table here. That's supposed to have eight entries in that table, but it's not, it's maybe I forgot to join again. Let's try that again. Yeah, I probably forgot to click join. There we go. All right, all right, there we go. We got players now on the right side of this table that wasn't there before. Sure. And what's cunning here, okay, just stop a second. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press F12 for me again. Okay, so. There's a grid going on here as well. So this is the inspector, this little blue button there. So here, the, the, oops, go back. Sorry, I can't click. You can see the, the, the way the purple lines are creating yeah. a left-hand side and a right-hand side, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, and some people, it depends on, on what's going on. You can have it so that the, the right hand side is centered vertically like this, or you can have it float to the top. It's kind of up to you. Um, but what I was wanting to show you, okay, go away, stop that. So this is this is the parent is in 
column one and the child is in column two. But right. in fact, you can specify it the other way around. If you, it does it actually, um, it's defaulted oh, okay. to one and two because no, that's fine. You know your settings, but you actually can. You can. There's a certain use case where you actually put the child on the left, and yeah. it's kind of cool. Um, okay, now this might is this too big, yeah. too small, too big, too big, uh, too much room for each line. Okay, so part of this is being caused by this checkbox button here. Um, so we could we could change that, for example. Um, let's let's go ahead and go stocks available. Go to browse stocks available. Okay, I lost you for a bit. My headset keeps clicking off on me. <laughs> go to go. We we the checkbox there is quite big. All right, so we can make that smaller. So let's go to browse stocks available. Um, where whatever that browse was, I don't know what it was. Where is it? There it is, way down there. Okay, so one of the things we can do is we can simplify that checkbox and make it a little bit more compact. So that was the... Uh, Auto buy. Auto buy. Now, the only way I could make that a checkbox was to put it edit in place, but I don't want the edit in place. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, uh, you can set the false. Oh, that was easy. Makes makes it read only, so that it basically is. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't. You know, the edit is always going to fail. And on fail shows read only. And I've also turned off the use button because the button is very big. It's got icons and text and all kinds of things. Okay. So so just having it as a plain checkbox is going to make it. Uh, compile and run that. I'll use my button. <laughs> yeah, they both seem to work fine. Okay. Hey, that, that's much better. Did I lose you again? No, 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 you can. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a case of, of kind of just going through it and just touching here and tweaking there and seeing, yeah. you know, what, yeah. what you want to do. It's worth following through the grid layout. It'll, it'll make your life easier in the long run. It's a little bit of work to get it all um, styled up correctly. You can change things. These are themes. And maybe yeah. that's a topic for next week. But you might come along and say, these buttons are too big. Um, there's too much space on them. Or, um, you know, whatever. There's, some, there's, there's something you want to change. And perhaps next week, we can look at um, how you okay. would change specific things in the theme. So work on the layout. But don't yeah. worry too much about the you know, the, the corners are rounded or the colors of this or the font is that or whatever. Um, why, why do we have something. auto lines up here, underline? Again, that's that's part of the theme. Yeah, because okay. because those are links. So you can click on one of those, it'll sort in that order. Yeah. And so it's, it's giving you a visual clue that you can do that. Okay. Columns that you wouldn't be able to sort on wouldn't have that underline. But that's a style. That's a, that's a theme setting, right? If you don't like it, it's trivial to turn it off. Okay. Now, have we got time to do my second half? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, oh yeah, you sent me the link on how to set up WebSockets. Yes. Um, I uh, activated the, the extension, the net refresh. Yes. 
But when I, your line number two is go to the web server procedure scripts tab. I could not find that. <laughs> okay, so when, when that's shorthand, to be fair. So whenever we say go to the web server procedure, where's the web server up here? We're always talking about the network extension. Ah. Uh, because that's all there is there, right? Okay. And so, and settings, and there's the scripts tab. Holy cow. All right. So whenever I say we go to web service procedures, something tab, it's going to be one of these okay. tabs. Sometimes you'll see I say extension slash settings slash scripts. Um, but but often the shorthand is just to to go to okay. tab. Turn on. Yeah, it's on. Did you do that? Or was no, that, that was that was on already. Yeah. No, that was on already. Yeah. Um what wasn't on obviously was was here where you did the local extension. You had to have ticked that on. That was a Okay. There was a setting in there as well. Because um, you want that list to update live. Right. Right. right? Yes, because uh, there's a timer procedure in here that changes things all the time. Uh, when you say timer procedure in here, where, where is it? There. Okay, let's have a look. So I do a whole bunch of stuff on clock ticks. Okay. And, and how will you know if that's, does that do like a set host value or something somewhere? Well, that sets, uh, changes a lot of stuff on that screen. But are you calling the net refresh um, is, is my point. Uh, I'm, yes. Uh, well, am I calling the net refresh? I'm not sure. Uh, I have because you, you've got to tell the system, "Hey, something's changed." Yes. Let everyone know. All right. Uh, what I have been doing. Where's my screen go? Is I have this display button, which does a refresh. Sure. But I want to go do that to, automatically. Go to, sure, and go back to that code. Okay, go back to that source you showed me. Okay, so I'm looking here for anything that says um, there's a net, net refresh dot send or. Um, I don't think I have anything like that in. Okay, so if you oh. change a table. Um, yes. Bring bring up the docs quickly, so because it, it's always useful to see what it says in the uh, doc. Bring up. Oh, the you want to see the. The network docs on. Um, on net refresh here. I'm not sure what you mean. You drive. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, in fact, what I'll do is I'll grab the screen. There. Share screen. Share. Okay. You can see me, right? Yep. So I'm thinking about the network docs, which I always have on speed dial server. Oh, that's, uh, is this Very the one second. you're talking about? <laughs> uh, net refresh, net refresh there. So there's the web sockets net refresh. So yeah, this is the, this is the one I had in mind. So yeah. you've, you've gone through, you added the global well, extension there. And then I got stuck on number two. And then you got stuck on number two, which we've sorted that out. And, okay. and, I, and we saw that one had to be, well, did I? So unlike desktop programs, Netflix is not enabled for browsers and calendars by default. So you have to turn that on on a case-by-case -case basis. So we need to do that if it's okay, not already done. I can done. do that. Pardon? Um, da, da, da. Triggering a cha change from the web server. So now that you've got a browser watching a table, Okay. They refresh and that table changes. But if you're changing the table, so let's say you're changing the stocks table, yeah. then, then you need to um, you need to trigger that change so that, that it knows to send it. It knows right. what you've done. Okay. And you're going to do that with a line like that in your code. I just use a date and time. You could use anything you like. Anything that, as long as it's got a new value, it'll, it'll come up. And obviously that would say stocks or whatever it is. So... 
they're talking about line, line three here. Uh, no. No, I'm talking about this line here. Oh, are you seeing what I'm seeing? No. Well, it says triggering a table change from the web server. OK. Uh, all right, all right. I, I see that now. I've got the, I've got that document up on my screen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's the but if you're that's in the web server procedure, which you are, you're going to use this line here. Okay. If you're in the web handler, you would use that line there. So, okay. So the top. That's that's how the, that's how everything knows what changed. Otherwise, okay. it doesn't know that it changed. So. Now, let me get make sure I understand this correctly. So anything that has those particular fields. Well, tables, uh, really. Any table with those fields on it will be refreshed? Or how does it know which table well, gets refreshed? Two, good, good question. So in the browse, I'm in, I'm in an arbitrary browse here. Um, you have to turn on that it's watching. And that you do all the way over in advanced. Whoops, go there, advanced. So refresh via WebSocket. Okay. Okay, when it refreshes, you can decide where it's going to refresh to. So first current lost. Oh, great, marvelous. Because <laughs> they have to click the first button too on the one table. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to refresh to to first or wherever you want. And then it's it's watching this country's table, this, this browse table that it's browsing on. That's what it's watching. Yeah. Okay, I'll figure it out from there. I just cool. got stuck on line two. <laughs> <laughs> got to step step one, no problem. Sort it out, lovely. Step two, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know how that goes. I know how that okay. goes. All right, you keep, keep working through that. Okay, cool. I will. And we'll talk, we'll talk next week once you've got more ideas about the themes. We'll talk next week about how you can do some more customized stuff. Okay, great. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Thanks so, so much. Pleasure. Right, Victor. Talk to me, Victor. Howdy, howdy. How's it going? Good. Uh, I don't know exactly when it started, but um, if I'm looking at one of my browses that has the price browse over on the right end that we've been working so extensively on. If I click on any of the columns to sort by it, it puts the search field and word in front of the price browse. Uh, you're going to have to show me. Promote to panelist. You still there? I can't hear you. No, I can't hear you. Is that me, John? No, for some oh, reason, for some reason, it muted when I shared or became a panelist. Oh, so, okay, muted you. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, anyway, uh, okay. Uh, so the price, the this fields here on the right, this little browse on the right is fine until I hit a sort. And then the search field and the search button shows up. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll have to debug that. I don't know why it's doing that. Actually, I have a suspicion I know why it's doing that. But we'll have to debug that. Maybe okay. to... Probably not tomorrow, actually, about in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, I don't Monday. work on Fridays either. Okay, I'll try to yeah. be in early Monday and we'll hook up. Yeah, yeah, catch up on Monday. I have a, I have a reasonable suspicion why that's happening, but but uh, we'd have to debug it. Okay. Yeah. And there's cool. one other really weird, weird little thing that I'll show you on Monday as well. It's not really okay. 
I don't think anybody else would run into it yet. So <laughs> I'm getting all these really great weirdies. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can imagine. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go there. Why? Okay. Um, uh, Mark's got a question. Not even a natural question, but I'm going to let him squeeze in. And then Karen's got his hand up, so then we'll go to him next. I see that. Mark, talk to me. Bruce, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks so much. I try. I, uh, I'm working with string theory and trying to use the gzip, uh, gunzip. And um, I'm bringing, I'm decrypting some data from a SQL source. And there's the decryption function returns of RChar max, which I'm using a blob to receive. And um, when I do a G unzip, because it indicates that it is zipped, then I'm getting a data error number three. Um, I'm hoping for some hints to understand why, what, where, where does that data error come from? Um, um, I, I can see where the data error comes from, but the, but the, the clue is that it's a uh, share screen. Um, um, so obviously it's using that um, that little DLL that it does use, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, Said the API or whatever it is. You uh, said it's minus three. Uh, which is indeed a data error. Do you see like an error trap or something? Do you see something in debug view? You see something in the... Oh, I'm the result coming back from the G unzip is the data error. So yeah, so it's that guy there. Yeah. So that's that guy there. Um, so he's doing an inflate in it, which will be fine. Then it'll then it does a leap of the inflates and as a result, um, and it finishes up with the stream end. If so it hits I'm something else. Sort of thinking that perhaps my Break. data is incomplete and coming from the blob. Perhaps. Um, it could be incomplete or it could be possibly not compressed or possibly not compressed with this, with what this thing can is wanting to decompress. Sure. It should get out through stream end and do a break. And the result would be ZRK there. Otherwise, it's going to break out here after whatever result, you know, its result will still be what it is, okay. and that'll end up returning. So I'm guessing it's either coming out through here. That one does a cycle. That one does a break. Yeah. So it's either it's either I think it's coming out through here. Well, either way, I think the next step is I got to verify my data size that I think is zipped is indeed the, I'm getting the right, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting and, an expanded size data. And and be careful what, what you mean by zipped because there's G zipped and there's zipped and they're slightly different. Um, so this this does a G zip and a G unzip. You would be, you'd be looking for the data to come in as, in, as G zipped. And you could yep. just drop it onto the disk and, and run the command line. There's a G zip and G unzip. Okay. Command line utilities. You run it and see what it says. Because if it comes back and says, no, that's that's bonkers. 
Okay. And um, then it's not gzipped. Uh, Zlib uh, decompressed with Zlib, right? That's yeah, yeah. So, like, I've got on my machine here. I've got um, gzip and gunzip. Gzip. Yeah. So if I go C uh, C utils. I mean, I must have got these from the web a million years ago. <laughs> these guys, yeah, uh, gzip. Okay. Gzip minus search. Second of December, nineteen ninety-seven. I mean, Gzip has been around. Yeah, you know, it's a it's 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 on the web. If you just Google Gzip, if you don't have it. Um. But sure. gzip, and then there's a gunzip, and cunningly, it, yeah, it's 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 a really it's an old style thing. If you say gzip, mark dot text, create mark dot text dot gz, it's like cunning. Anyway, you can see that. Hold on, maybe um, I'm maybe I'm goofed up because my I was just rereading my developer notes that it's a zlib compression, so. I may yes, be and that's what, that's the right what, thing. Well, uh, so this thing is using CLIB API. So no, you should be OK. OK. Um, yeah, where you going there? All right, well, I'll take, my, I'll take my, what I think is the compressed data, and I'll throw it into, I actually just wrote a little bit of code to use string theory to throw it off to yeah. the disk so I can. Make, make sure it's the right thing. length it's, it's being yeah. clipped or not clipped or whatever it needs to be. Um, uh, let's go to. Oh, so I am using the string theory from blob method to pull it out yes. of my blob field. And that won't pad it. That'll leave it as alone as it is. Okay. But just, um, just see how long it is and see if, if you think yeah. that's about as long as it should be. Um, I don't think I've compiled any of these in like forever. <laughs> no. Ahmed, what's the access ribbon? Zlib. Uh, it's not, it's this one. Zlib WAPI, Zlib Windows API DLL. So yeah, Zlib compression. It'll be fine. It should be fine. Okay. Uh, I just need to make sure that's in the right place, right? And if I do, I just stuffed a string and then did a, a gzip and a G unzip and I get the same same result that I started with in string theory. So yeah. Seems like I got the libraries in the right place. Yes. Well, make right, sure well, it's different. Make sure it's different after you zipped it. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. I zipped it, I unzipped it. It's perfect. It's like, yeah, it didn't do anything. It broke both <laughs> ways. It, uh, two broke two wrongs in this case make a right. Um yeah, okay, cool. All right. Thanks so much, Ruth. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Participants, where have you gone? Participants. Hey, Karen, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, 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 Bruce. How about you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, uh, two, two, uh, two days ago, I spoke to you, right? I'm trying to run the sample application from network uh, example application. It gives some error. I need to try on that one. I don't understand what is the error about. Can you look at it in my screen? I can, just a second. So more, first I promote you to a panelist and you accept that. Okay, join us there. Yeah. And now you should be able to say share screen. Wait, I'll stop my sharing there. Now you should be able to say share screen and then you say share again. You got it? There we go, we can see a screen, okay. Open the app.
Okay, stop here a second. I'm assuming it's that. Oh, uh, wait, I'm going to say uh, request for my control. Okay, so if we compile. Okay, so it's, it, it's compiling in Kryptonite. And the reason it's doing that, if we look, there's no Kryptonite extension, but this project, and I fix this in the build, next build, but this project, if we go to project options, compiling, conditional symbols, you've got Kryptonite symbols in here. Remove that one, remove that one. Remove that one. Remove that one. They're just left behind in the project from when there was Kryptonite in here. And I fixed it for the next build so that it won't have that. There you go. Uh, we can't hear you. You're probably muted now because Apparently, if you become a panelist, you get muted for reasons best known to itself. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, Bruce. Uh, maybe I just explore more bit about your thing. Huh? There we go. Um, yeah, cool. So there it is. It's running. So you can. Uh, okay, move okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. So if you get that, if you get that error, just go to uh, project options and take Kryptonite out of the project options there. Cool. All right, John, talk to me. What, what do you want to talk about, Bruce? Well, did, did you follow any of that with your terrible headset today? I fixed it. I fixed it. Oh, okay. It was, it was the... Um, there's software that that processes all my audio in and out, and I just restarted that software, and that oh, fixed it. Okay, okay, just like that, huh? Hey? All right, just like that. What's happening tomorrow, John? Tomorrow, Mike Hansen and myself will be working on tabs, MDI or threaded tabs, uh, to make your Clarion application look kind of like a browser. Ah, yes, tabbed interface, as they were saying. Yes, yes. Cool. That's All it. right. And that's at 9 a.m. Pacific time every Friday. We do the Clarion Live weekly webinar. So we'll all see you there. Don't be shy. And of course, don't forget the open Clarion webinar every Wednesday, same time as this webinar. Uh, and I think that's all there is to say. So on that note, it's bye from me. Bye from me. You. Bye from bye. Ted. Bye from <laughs> Down Under. Are you, you going to do <laughs> Bye from Down Under. Oh, I just threw a cat on the barbie. No, the mute button keeps turning itself on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my That's goodness. what they all say. Yeah. Well, Bye, Ted. Said I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. You go back to sleep now, Ted. That was kind of you. I'll do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clicking it. I'm clicking it. Here we go. There it goes. There we go. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs>